Hello, welcome to our session on uh, power quality. This is Professor Umar Rao from RV College of Engineering, bringing you the lecture series under the VTU e-learning center e-sukshana program. So we have uh, seen in, in my last uh, two sessions, uh, what is the meaning of power quality and why there is a renewed in interest in power quality and uh, which are the industries which are you know, very sensitive to uh, uh, power quality problems, etc. So in this session, I'll be uh, dealing with some standard power quality issues and what they are, okay? So in this course, we'll, we'll be just uh, defining the various quality problems. That's the scope of this uh, talk. So let us see first, uh, this figure neatly puts all the details. I have the power quality. Then the first kind of disturbance is transient. Transient means something which is not steady. Okay. So which naturally should die down. But that doesn't mean that they won't create problems. They will create problems. For example, lightning dies down. It, it lasts for a few microseconds, but lightning can cause you know, unmeasurable hazards. So transients we have are of two types, impulsive transients and oscillatory transients. And uh, then we have what we call as long duration voltage variations, long duration voltage variations. So you see here, I'll only be talking of voltage most of the time. The reason being, as we had discussed, you know, power quality is equal to voltage quality because the utility is the one which is giving me the voltage. So my voltage at the customer premise, whether it's an industry, residential, commercial, whatever, should be undisturbed, right? So long duration voltage uh, variations. So we have over voltage, the name itself tells you more than what is required. Then under voltage, we'll see some waveforms and definitions soon. I'm only giving you the classification here. And sustained interruption. Interruption means no power. No power for the customer. That's the meaning of interruption. Next, we have short duration voltage variations. I have what I call as a sag. Sag means, you know, less, come down. Okay, similar to under voltage. Swell, swell means what? Increase, similar to over voltage. Interruption, we already saw what's the meaning of interruption. Then I have voltage imbalance. So we know that in the normal healthy grid, the three line voltages or the three phase voltages are all balanced. That means equal in magnitude and displaced by 120 degrees. So for that, my load also should be balanced. But you have studied in your power systems course that faults like single line to ground fault, double line to ground fault, etc. These faults can cause unbalance in the voltages. Different phases may have different voltages. So voltage unbalance is another kind of power quality issue. We just imagine if you, you have a balanced three phase induction motor, large induction motor, say a 5000 HP motor, and the voltage is unbalanced. So obviously, the, 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 it will cause vibrations, torque oscillation. So many issues will be there. Okay. Therefore, voltage unbalance is also a power quality issue. Then waveform distortion. What is the wave meaning of the waveform distortion? I told you, we want pure sinusoid voltage. So if there is any distortion in the nature of the wave, we call it as a waveform distortion. That means it's not sinusoidal. So in that you can have many, many uh, kinds, DC offset, harmonics, interharmonics, notching and noise. Yeah, we'll see what each one of them are in the coming slides. Then I have voltage fluctuation. 
how many of us are familiar with lights, bulbs, you know, just going on, off, on, off, on, off, flickering. So sometimes even your refrigerator, you know, it goes because the power comes on and off, on and off, rapid variations in the voltage. Then we have power frequency variation. So this frequency variation is over a larger area. This is not just on the distribution side. The transmission and generation also will have a role to play in frequency variations. Okay. So these are the broad power quality issues. And now we will uh, uh, quickly see what each one of them means. So the first is transients. So what is the meaning of a transient in uh, any electrical uh, parameter? It is that part of the change in a variable which disappears during transition from one steady state to another. You have a capacitor, it's open. You close it. So it will reach some steady state. So in between, there will be a transient period. Because the charging of the capacitor is not, you know, it, it, there's a differential equation involved. So wherever you have differential equations, you will have some transient uh, operation, transient period. So possibly re recollect, you might have studied it in network theory, you have studied it in signals and systems, the transient response, steady state response. Okay. So that is the meaning of transient. It's the variable which disappears while your system or network makes a transition from one steady state to another. So these are of two types, impulsive and oscillatory. The names itself tell you what it means, impulse. So in, in signals you have studied, what is an impulse? So an impulse signal is one which has a steep rise in magnitude and it quickly dies down. That's an impulse. Okay, oscillatory, oscillations continue. So these terms reflect the wave shape of a current or voltage transient. These disturbances are expected to change shape as they propagate through the power system because it's an electrical signal. And an electrical signal is an electromagnetic wave. And you know that electromagnetic waves, as they propagate through the medium, they get attenuated and there is going to be a phase shift. You have studied about propagation constant in field theory. So these disturbances, when they move through the system, you know, they will change because of the propagation constants. That is purely dependent on the material used. Okay. So now let's see what is an impulsive transient. An impulsive transient is a sudden non-power frequency not your 50 hertz or 60 hertz, non-power frequency change in the steady state voltage of current uh, or voltage or both. And it is unidirectional in polarity, very important. Unidirectional, either it will be positive or it will be negative. So what are the keywords here? It is a sudden, suddenly, it doesn't raise slowly exponentially, impulse. Suddenly it raises and it's a non-power frequency and unidirectional in polarity. So how do I characterize it? So since it's a sudden, we characterize it by the rate of change of the rise and decay. So you will say so many volts per microsecond. That's how you will specify an impulse transient or micro amperes if it's if it's an impulse current so many amperes per microsecond so amperes per microsecond gives you the rate of change of current okay so the most important source of impulse impulsive transients are lightning lightnings then you have oscillatory transient this also is a sudden non power frequency change in the steady state of voltage current of both and it includes both positive and negative polarity values okay so it consists of a voltage or current whose instantaneous value changes polarity rapidly 
high frequency rapidly. So how do I characterize it? Just like I characterized the impulsive transient by rate of change, we characterize the oscillatory transient by its spectral content. That is a frequency. Spectrum means frequency, the duration and the magnitude. Frequency, duration and magnitude. Okay. Back-to-back -back capacitor energization results in oscillatory transient currents. So other reasons are opening and closing of disconnected circuit breakers on energized lines. The line is carrying power. That's the meaning of an energized line. And you suddenly open and break the circuit breaker or close it. This is one reason why you will get oscillations. Because please remember, a line is an RLC circuit. And you also have capacitors, other capacitors you might have put, for example, for power factor. So you have RLC circuits. So you are in network theory, you have studied RLC circuits can cause oscillations. You have under damped, over damped, critically damped. So oscillations will be there whenever you have RLC. Then capacitor bank switching. So you have capacitor banks for power factor improvement. So when you switch that, you will have oscillations. Reclosing operations of switches, reclosures, tap changing on transformers. So when you want to change the tap on the transformer, it's not as easy as you draw a figure and show the tap moving. No, there is a process to it because you'll be interrupting the current. See, you'll, you, you will have a brush and it has to, you know, the contact has to be changed from one tap to another tap. So you'll be breaking and making contact. So that will cause transients. So normally these uh, uh, oscillatory transients are in the range of five to 500 kilohertz. Loose connections in the distribution system that results in arcing can also cause tr oscillatory transients. Okay. You see when a wire is loosely connected, it makes and breaks contact. You know, you, you'll hear the chit 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 sound also in your houses sometimes. So look at this figure. Can you see here? This is sinusoidal. And suddenly the lightning strikes and there is an impulse here. So this is in phase R. It is of negative polarity. And in Y, you can see it is positive. And in B also it is positive. So this is how an impulsive uh, transient would look like. Now, just look at this. Uh, voltage and current waveform during switching on the monitor. So you see here, the voltage is sinusoidal, but the current, you see, there's a huge spike, impulsive current. And this is a typical oscillatory uh, signal. So you see here, there are oscillations here, like this, high frequency oscillations. This is in the current and this is the voltage when you switch on a capacitive load. Okay. So these oscillatory transients are uh, classified, further classified into low frequency, medium frequency and high frequency based on their spectral content. So the high frequencies last for a very short time. So they are around 0.5 to 5 megahertz and they last for around five microseconds. And the medium frequency is between five. This is more, most common. So your capacitor switching, et cetera, all these causes medium frequency oscillations. It is between five to 500 kilohertz and lasts for around 20 microseconds and can typically go up to eight per unit. And low frequency is less than five kilohertz. Uh, for slightly higher duration from around 0.3 to 50 milliseconds and uh, the magnitude can be up to 4 per unit. So I think you're clear about what is uh, oscillatory transient. Next, I have long duration voltage variations. So when I want to talk of the voltage variation, here I'm talking of the magnitude. So we take the RMS value. So you know whatever is the RMS value, you know how to define it, right? So 
the long duration uh, variations encompass RMS deviations at power frequencies. This is important. When I call it as a long duration, it is for longer than one minute. It has to last for more than one minute. Only then it is called as a long duration voltage variation. So this can be either over voltage or under voltage. They are generally not caused by system faults, but most by load variations and switching operations also. System faults are not the only reasons for over voltage and under voltage. So now let's come to the definition. So an over voltage is an increase in the RMS AC voltage to a value greater than 100% at the power frequency for duration longer than one minute. See here, there are so many things here. First, I'm taking RMS value, number one. Number two, it has to be more than 110%. That means 1.1 per unit of the nominal value. Next, it is at power frequency. So you are taking the 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz component of the voltage and duration is longer than one minute. So there are four parameters to define. The RMS value, 1.1 per unit, power frequency and time greater than one minute. They are usually the result of load switching. So suddenly a large load is thrown off. Oh, voltage will shoot up. We have seen Ferranti effect. Right, uh, so you know that is from the system side during load low loads. So why is the load low? Some loads are removed, so the voltage will go up. And uh, indirect tap setting on transformers, incorrect transformer settings. Under voltage is the reverse, so it's a decrease in the RMS value to less than ninety percent. That is 0.9 per unit. Below, if it falls below 0.9 per unit, again, at power frequency and for longer than one minute, we call that as an under voltage. So switching on a load. So when you switch on a load, it will cause an under voltage. Or you switch off a capacitor bank, it can cause an under voltage. So voltage, you, you, you remember, we, we had discussed capacitor banks are are installed to remove, to improve the voltage, to improve the voltage. So when I remove the capacitor bank, obviously you can have an under voltage. And, uh, or voltage regulation equipment, they take some time to operate, to bring back the, uh, you know, voltage to its original value. So all this. So sustained periods of under voltage, is called as a brownout. So now you see this is an under voltage. The voltage has reduced. Only thing is it, it should last for more than one minute. Here this is over voltage. This is impulsive over voltage. Okay. Next sustained interruption. So when the supply voltage has zero voltage or we can say less than 10%. That is one another definition is less than 10%. That is less than 0.1 per unit for more than a minute. Then we can consider it as a sustained interruption. So normally voltage interruptions are because some breaker opens. So there is a fault. The breaker would have reclosed two times or three times and then it opens permanently. Then the power is cut off. Okay. So this has no relation to use of outage. Don't, don't confuse the interruption with outage. Outage is done intentionally. This is an interruption. So you see here, you have zero power, zero voltage. So these are the long duration voltage variations. Under voltage, over voltage and interruption. Short duration. So short duration, they're caused by fault conditions. Energization of large loads, which require high starting current motor. Imagine if you put on a 5000 HP motor, suddenly the voltage will drop and then it will pick up as the speed rises. Or intermittent loose connections in power wiring. 
So the fault can cause temporary drops or rises or interruptions. Okay. So the sag is similar to the under voltage. Same definitions, less than 90% at power frequency. Only thing is the duration is less than one minute. If it lasts for more than one minute, you call it as an under voltage. And uh, Europe, they use the word dip. US, they use the word sag. Europe uses the word voltage dip to mean voltage sag. The name itself tells you sagging means coming down. So the power quality community has used sag for a long time. Sag is more commonly used. They're caused by, they could be caused by lightning strikes, ground faults. In fact, 80% of the power quality issues are because of improper grounding also. Energizing heavy loads, starting of large induction motors, and startup of uh, equipment such as elevators, air conditioners, heating, heating equipment, compressors, etc. So all these will cause a sag. So you see sag, very clear. Similar to under voltage. Swell is the reverse. For a duration of 0.5 cycles to one minute, to values greater than 110%, more than 1.1 per unit of the nominal value. So it includes, it includes the reasons of st starting and stopping of heavy loads. Unsymmetrical faults will cause us Drip, dip in one phase and increase in another. Poorly regulated transformers. Voltage swell may lead to loss of production and damage of sensitive equipment. Okay. Next. Voltage unbalance. It's also called as voltage imbalance. Both, both terms are used. Is uh, How do I define it? Maximum deviation from the average of the three phase voltages are currents divided by the average of the three phase voltages are currents expect expressed in percent. So you find the average of the three phases and you find out which phase the deviation is maximum from the average as a percentage of the average value. That is one criteria index to uh, measure voltage imbalance. So the unbalance could be either in the magnitudes or in the phase or both. So it could be caused by blown off fuses in one phase of fuse may blow off and you will still have uh, voltage in the other two phases or due to single phase loads, unbalanced single phase loads on a three phase uh, system and uh, the issues with unbalances, it can generate harmonics. And uh, if nonlinear loads are supplied with unbalanced supply, they can get damaged. Machines can get damaged. Okay. So you can see here, our face is this. And blue is here. And Y is here. So you see, the three are not equal. So it is a voltage unbalanced. The next type of uh, disturbance is the waveform distortion. I told you, distortion means not sinusoid. So there are five primary types. First is the DC offset. See, if you take a sinusoidal wave, the average value is DC. Sorry, is zero. The average is, is the DC value is zero because it will be symmetrical in the positive and negative. Now, if it has an average value, means it has a DC component. That's called as a DC offset. That's called as a DC offset. So the presence of a DC voltage or current in an AC power system is termed as the DC offset. It can occur because of disturbances, geomagnetic disturbances that is inherently in nature or asymmetry of power converters. We told, we discussed that power converters are extensively used today in modern drives. Low frequency magnetic fields below 5 hertz associated with solar flares, all these can cause a DC offset. So the slowly varying field induces low frequency current in long transmission lines. And when these currents, that is due to these solar flares, the 5 hertz signals, 
they when they pass through the transformers they saturate and you can have it see offset yeah you see here this dark blue line the dark blue wave here this has equal positive and negative so the average value will be zero now look at this light blue line the positive is this much but negative is more so can you see it positive is small and negative is more so if you take the average value it will have a negative value this is how a dc offset would look like so the problem with dc is it may saturate the transformer cores and any other reactors you have in the network may get saturated next harmonics harmonics are sinusoidal voltages or currents having frequency that are integer multiples of the supply frequency so in india it is 50 hertz means multiples of 50 hertz 100 150 200 250 and so on so your fourier transforms is an excellent method to extract the frequency spectrum of any signal right so the harmonic distortion levels are described by a quantity called as the total harmonic distortion i'm sure you would have studied this in power electronics or in even basic electronics so it is the ratio of the total harmonic rms voltage as a percentage of the fundamental okay or current or current that is a total harmonic distortion so when we define standards we define the permissible thd for different voltage levels so these are caused mainly by microprocessor based loads computer power supplies lightning ballasts which are there with all our modern uh, fluorescent cfl etc electronic adjustable speed drives telecommunication and computer inter interface etc so you see almost all the equipment we use today will cause uh, harmonics and what all that can it do it will overheat motors and transformers decrease the motor performance deteriorate capacitors etc so you see here beautiful uh, plot just to show you what's the meaning of harmonics you take the green one right the green is the fundamental 360 degrees now you take the red so if you take the red so in one cycle the green makes this red signal has made five cycles so it is the fifth harmonic and the blue has made seven cycles so it is frequency will be seven times so that is the seventh harmonic now when i add all the three i get this yellow one this so you see actually this yellow is what you will observe you won't be seeing this green red and blue is not visible to you yellow color one you see is the actual current now the green blue and red is what i split it's a transformation i do and i pick up okay in this signal these are the frequencies these are the magnitudes you can do that using fourier coefficients so almost majority of modern loads cause harmonics and majority of the modern loads are also sensitive to harmonics they get damaged also in the presence of harmonics next we have notching this is also called as commutations so in if you have any converter like a rectifier or an inverter you know the the switches turn on and off based on a switching pattern so whenever it happens the small glitch will occur when the current is commuted from one phase to another phase that is called as notching so can you see here you can see here these glitches small glitches this is because the current shifts from one switch to other this is called as notching okay it's caused by converters rectifiers smps etc it may stress the insulation and cause heating in machines and uh, can cause at times mal operation of other equipment but it's an inherent part of electronic switching then the other waveform distortion is interharmonics 
That means these are harmonics. Harmonics have a frequency which is a multiple of the power frequency. These are non-integer multiples. Non-integer multiples. So if you have, if you have a fifty hertz power frequency, seventy-five hertz is an interharmonic. Okay. The main sources are frequency converters and cyclo converters, induction furnaces, and arcing devices. Finally, noise. Any unwanted electric signal with a spectrum of more, you know, content load more, less than two hundred kilohertz superimposed on power system is called as noise. This is how it would act. Very difficult to. Quantify it or specify it. We beautifully quantified so many parameters. What is the meaning of harmonic? What is the meaning of interharmonic? Sir, as well, but I can't quantify noise. I can't give a proper definition. All right. So the cause of electric noise is due to radars and radio coupling, arcing devices, converters, switching circuits. So many things. All of them produce noise in neighboring equipment due to electromagnetic uh, disturbances. And these noise can interfere with the communication system, and at times also damage sensitive equipment. So these are the five different types of waveform distortions. So what are they? DC offset, harmonics, inter interharmonics, notching, and noise. The next power quality disturbance is voltage fluctuation or flicker. So we define sag and swell. That is more than one point one and less than point nine. Now this will be within the band, so I can't specify it as a sag or a swell. It will be within the band of point nine to one point one, so it's an acceptable level. But in that acceptable range, it continuously changes. That's called as a voltage fluctuation, and it's called as flicker. Okay, so. This will have a lot of impact on illumination, predominantly on illumination, and uh, it can have an effect on the intensity of the light. So the main causes of flicker are electric arc furnaces and induction furnaces. So the main irritant is uh, irritation at home and offices is interference with certain equipment, especially lighting equipment. See, it, this is what it looks like. So you see. The voltage is ninety six percent, so well within the limit. So you see, this is ninety five point five. So this is a perfectly acceptable level, but within this level, there is a rapid variation. So if you give this voltage to the lighting equipment, the lighting will flicker, especially very obvious with incandescent bulbs. Okay, so we will end this session. and this is also the last session in this module and in this course itself okay so uh, we have finished five modules of the course on transmission and uh, distribution and um, best of luck to all of you thank you